met Mark and Larry at Dillwell, Oklahoma at the MABRC Symposium the end of September 2017. Sisters of the Moon were speakers there and Mark Newell was given a presentation also. We shared a camp that weekend with them and got to know them pretty well and enjoyed visiting with them and learning from them and sharing our experiences and we had told them how just two weeks earlier the Sisters of the Moon had a spent a weekend in another area in southeast Oklahoma. We had never been there before and Henry Edge had gone out and done some recon in several different locations in this area that we were interested in. She uh, went out on her own one day and went to several areas, looked around, took pictures, discuss the different areas with us. We looked at the pictures and we all agreed upon one certain area and she had dropped a pin to it and we ended up all meeting there. After we met and talked to Mark and Larry at the symposium and had told them the whole story and told them a little bit more than what we talked about, we invited them to join us one weekend in this location where we had had all this activity. So about three weeks later, they came over to Oklahoma and met us there. We had a, a great time, great experience, and it was a very interesting location. Interesting because of the way it looks like it's been weaved around the tree. Um, we have a fork where it splits off and you've got two. And whoever, whatever did this, took one side, it should naturally go on the outside of this tree, but instead brought it over to the opposite side. And then they took the left-hand side, did the same thing, brought it to the opposite side where they're crisscrossed and then weaved around the tree. And they come on over and then this is pulled down and it's holding it down. And then you've got several more arches on down from it. But the way it's weaved to us, to me, shows that it had to be fingers used. Never experienced any night <laughs> like two weeks ago. And we were sitting there in camp, just put our tent up, it got dark, and it was like as soon as it got dark, it all began. We had wood knocks, we had howls of moans. We'd never heard moans before, ever. I hadn't. I don't know if you have, but I know <coughs> neither one of us had. They were really creepy sounds. And we're sitting there, directly from in front of us, loud as can be, plain as day, the most perfect whoo! And then from behind us, another perfect whoo! We're like, <laughs> we were so excited until they just became obnoxious and kept us up all night long. Uh, we, we went to bed. We heard, yeah, we weren't, we weren't going to go into great detail with this, but that night, as we're in bed, I'm standing up in front of my cot, and um, it was almost 1 a.m. She was laying down, and I hear, <coughs> out front. And I said, I looked at her, and I said, Henry's here. So I lower the blind, I look out, there was no vehicle. And so I stepped back and I went, I don't see her vehicle anywhere. And then I hear <coughs> from over to the side a little bit more. So I look back out there and there's no vehicle. So then I'm thinking, crap. So I zip it up and I look at her and I said, those were coughs. I said, but there's nobody out there. Henry's not out there. There's no vehicle. And she said, are you sure? I said, there's nobody out there. So I lower it down, I take my spotlight and I'm shining it out and I'm hollering, Henry! Henry Edge! <laughs> no answer. So I zip it back up. She's like, are you sure they were coughs? I said, those were coughs. Those were human coughs. And then I heard a third one. But I had heard that just as I'd laid down. So when I heard that third one, I sat up and I'm like, Kim, that was a cough. Did you hear it? can't hear out of this ear that well. I'm like, what? And so she was laying on her good ear, and I'm like, sad. And we heard it again, another cough, or I heard another cough. And so I said, okay. So I, I get out of my cot, and I get in the middle of the tent, and I'm over there so I can whisper to her. I said, that's four coughs. We go out, we look, there's nothing out there. We see that the wood on the fire has, you know, fallen over a little bit. She said, do you think maybe it was that? And I went, not really, but 
I have no explanation for it. I said, it didn't sound like wood falling over in a fire. It sounded like coughs. They were the exact same cough <coughs> each time. And she'd been coughing while we were sitting at the tent. But go back in the tent, lay down. Within not even a minute, there's another cough. It's over to the side of our tent, louder and closer. So I get up, she gets up, we're in the center of the tent. I'm whispering in her good ear, <laughs> and I'm like, do you, do you think it could be humans out there? And she said, if it is, they walked a long ways in. So now I'm thinking, I don't know, I don't know what else, you know. It sounded so human. Now, I've never heard a Bigfoot cough, <laughs> and I've never heard other animals cough. I've heard them hack, you know, but I've never heard it sound like a human cough. And that's what these sounded like. We heard it, I heard it eight times. But then, while we're sitting there, something hits up under the corner of the tent and the corner of the cot, and you can see the whole side of the tent just shaking. And while she had been in her cot on the other side, Something jerked her cot. My cot was up, was up against the tent wall, and I was laying on it, and something from the outside jerked my cot and jerked me. And she ended and up in the floor. I got in the floor. I wasn't getting by the tent wall no more. That's one of the reasons we're in the middle. Oh, yeah. After after all those coughs, and then we heard, you know, the tent being hit, her cot being jerked, it was hit again over here. We had something that sounded like it was dragging its fingers across the top. We could hear the footsteps, and I had two audio recorders out while this was going on, and I'm like, this is awesome. And the whole time after that, we heard moans. We heard what I can only describe as gibberish, uh, three different tones. So it sounded like three different voices of gibberish. We heard a tree crash, which sounded like it was just right outside our tent. Uh, you could hear it snapping. You could hear it splintering and then crashing to the ground so loud. More howls, calls, just all night up until almost 4 a.m. And that's about the time, I guess, that Henry pulled up. We didn't know because I had just laid down. After that tree crashed, it seemed to kind of die down. And the next morning at 6.30, I heard her out there, and I get up, and I go out, and I'm telling her, she's like, when I pulled in, I saw something that looked like it was running away from y'all's tent on this ridge line up here. But after we were sitting there in the middle of that tent, surrounded, because, I mean, it was getting our tent from all sides. Uh, she has a little closet area off the back of her tent. We use it for a potty area, and it was having a field day with that little area back there. And uh, finally, I was, that's when I said, do you think it's humans? Because, I don't know about y'all, humans scare me a whole heck of a lot more than Bigfoot do. Yeah. And that, that big cats and big hogs is why I carry a gun. Now, if I ever do come across something aggressive that's big and hairy, I'm going to have a, a gun big enough, too. But that's not why I carry a gun. This was why I carried a gun. And so I'm like, do you think it's humans? And that's when she said they had to walk a long ways in. I said, well, I'm, I'm just really not enjoying this. And so we decided that we are going to go outside. And so, so I had a spotlight. Go ahead. I had the spotlight, and we both had the gun. She's behind me, and I first opened the tent door, and we come rushing outside with the spotlight, like Charlie's Angels. <laughs> <laughs> and we're looking around. <laughs> nothing. Didn't see nothing. nothing. Nothing out there. Nowhere. Nothing at all. But I mean, we walked trying to see what we could see. Didn't see nothing. So we went back in and it continued. It started up again within probably five minutes after we got back in. All right. We're back at the place where we had the scariest all-night encounter ever sisters of the moon debbie jones and carrie martin are going to see if we can elicit another response like a couple months ago we have our fire we have our tent and our sex assails <laughs> 
Debbie is using the flare and I turned the light on and I turned it off because I was afraid that the light would scare them off if there's anything out here. So we will check back shortly. Okay, base camp just made a couple of whoops and a long howl and we did not hear a response. I'm going to leave the recorder running and if I need to, I'll spotlight it. But I'll leave the video on the fire for right now. Okay, Debbie's got the parabolic cap. It's a quiet weekend. Mm-hmm. What was that? What was that? I have no clue. Something rustling in the brush? What's Behind us. I got it going straight that way and that's why I heard it. Oh, really? Like straight across. How loud did it sound to you? It was loud enough that I heard it, yeah. and I'm hard of hearing, so. You know, I have a parabolic, so it's hard to, but it was a different. Mm. But that's what it sounded like, rustling, like yes. when I moved my foot just then. Yes. I know I'd have to turn the flare back on as soon as I turn it on. <laughs> Ooh, that smoke's right in my face. Smoke follows beauty, you know. Yes, it does. <laughs> where that comes from. Sesame Street. <laughs> Snuffleupagus. The fire is mesmerizing. Yeah, it is. That's your phone. She wants to know if we heard a fox. A fox. Henry Edge is keeping in contact with us by our cell phones. She just texted me and asked if hear a fox. What's it sound like? I don't know. What does it sound like? LOL. <laughs> Google fox. I think they have like a squeak, bark, a squeaky bark type I sound. I heard barking. Yeah. We heard barking. Maybe you should squeal like a pig. <laughs> <laughs> turn this recorder off for a minute. If anything exciting happens, I'll pick it back up. Alright, we're back. And we just had something heavy thrown towards our direction. And we were sitting here talking and it something hit my truck. The second time. A second time. So, and we've heard nothing up until then as far as anything dropping or falling or being thrown. All right, we'll check back. All right, so 
things are getting tossed at us, and we're going to look around a little. I don't know. I think that what hit the truck came from the trees. That's a pecan tree. That's what it was. Or an acorn. It wasn't an acorn because wherever it hit it was bigger. It was a walnut or a pecan. That's a pecan tree, I'm thinking. Walnut. Yeah, it is. That's a walnut. Walnut. That's what it was. That's why you shouldn't sit and panic. That's right. Check it out. Check it out. Walk around. Some Research. All right. We'll check back with y'all later. All right. We're going to sit back down. But something heavy oh, hit the fudge. ground. <gasps> Did it break? Good. I thought it was broken. Oh, good. All right. But as I was saying, something heavy fell and hit the ground behind us with a loud thump. That was no walnut. The and then thump? a few seconds after that, the walnut hit our truck, and that caused us to get up and look around. But I haven't seen a rock or a log or anything that has been tossed this way, so I don't know. I can't explain it. Okay, we're back again. It's been quiet since that heavy object was thrown or fell or whatever. Something heavy hit the ground anyway. We couldn't find it, but we found the walnut that hit the truck. And it's been pretty quiet for the last 15, 20 minutes. We'll check back. placed here like this because there's no hole here where the root came from. There's a hole over here and if it had naturally fallen then the root ball would be at that hole. And then, and then, and then. And then the, the way the roots are pointed here and here and it's stabbed into the ground it's been pressed into the ground several inches. Same with the root ball on this tree. It's been pressed into the ground. And it's being held up by that fork up there. And when y'all come through here a couple of months ago, this tree break over here, y'all do not believe was there. No, no, it was not. Nor the one next to it. That tree went down as, as well. Or oh, this one, I don't think, because we didn't really sat on it. Did you sit on this tree? I sat on this. Okay. And when we came through here mid-September, this break wasn't here when we were looking at that. The placement of the tree. And neither was that one and the third one. And they're all pointing down the same direction. Bugs are coming alive. <laughs> She's behind you. She's... Are you still videoing? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. It just cracked me up. I'm
I'm sorry. I'm dreaming of midgets. I can help it. Edit the midget out. Edit the midget out. Uh, not on your life. <laughs> <laughs>